Hello and happy snow day assignment. So if you've already done free body diagrams up to and including a free body diagram of a rocket, then you can go ahead and skip this video and just work on the uh, homework assignment sheet, which again you may also have seen, so check that out. But for those of you who haven't done free body diagrams, we'll do the whole thing on the video and let's just start from scratch. What is a free body diagram? It's just a picture of all the forces acting on a given object or person. So let's start nice and easy. Here's a girl standing on the ground. There are two forces acting on her. One, the force of gravity, which simply points downwards right there. There's force of gravity pulling her down. And the other force is the floor, which pushes her up in the air. Now, how do these two forces compare? They should be about equal because she's not flying up or sinking into the floor. And the force of the floor has a special name. It's called the normal force. In fact, normal force is the force of any two surfaces pushing against each other. So we're going to see normal forces a lot. If you go and shove your little sister, well, you are applying a normal force to her. Don't do that, by the way. So the forces that we see in everyday life are normal force, which is uh, a push, friction, which is two surfaces trying to slide over each other, gravity, pulling you down to the earth, and tension, which is like a, a rope pulling or pulling on somebody's arm. So in this example here, it's a ball hanging, there's a force of gravity pulling down, and a tension force pulling up, and that tension force will point in the direction of the string. Now, a nice hard example is this person who is leaning up against a wall. There are no less than four forces acting on this person. There is gravity, which pulls him down, and there is straight up normal force, which pushes him up. That's the force of the floor pushing him upwards. But there's two other forces. The wall, he's leaning against the wall, and if the wall wasn't there, he would just fall over. So the wall must be pushing him, preventing him from falling over, and it pushes him this way. The wall will push him to the left, and that is a normal force because it's two surfaces pushing. If these three were the only forces, then he would actually zip over in the left direction, over here where my mouse is. So why doesn't he do that? Because there is another force pushing him into the wall. And what could that possibly be? And it turns out that it's his shoes. It's friction from his shoes. Now, if you envision that this person is wearing roller skates uh, or standing on a skateboard, well, his feet would just slide out from under him and he would come crashing down. Obviously, that isn't happening because the shoes that he's wearing have enough grip to prevent that. And grip is just another fancy word for force of friction. Feel free to pause this video if you want to write down. I know I'm not writing down the uh, names of the forces because, yeah, PowerPoint is kind of inconvenient to do this in. All right, now let's make this a little harder. Here's a baseball player sliding into home plate. So he is slowing down and uh, sliding away. What forces could be acting on him? Pause the the movie to think about this for a moment. Okay, let's do it. Two of them are pretty straightforward. Gravity pushes him down and normal force pushes him up, preventing him from falling into the bowels of the earth. But there's another force. He's sliding, he's moving to the right, so there's a friction force slowing him down which is pointing to the left. And those are the three forces, gravity, normal, friction. All right, now let's be even harder. How about somebody who is from a stop who's starting to run? 
think about what forces are acting on this person. All right, gravity, downwards, normal force, upwards, kind of getting that these, these two are pretty common, right? They're not always there, especially that normal force. The normal force is only if it's touching a surface, but so far all of these examples have been something touching a surface. So you gravity, normal force, and then what gets this person running? Because if these are the only two forces, there's nothing, they need to have something pushing this person to the right. So there must be a force pushing this way to get this person going, and it is amazingly a friction force. Wait, hold the, hold on, hold on, hold on. Friction is speeding him up? I thought friction slowed things down! Come on! Well, friction can slow things down, but it can also speed things up. This person is relying on the grip of their shoes to get going. If their shoes had no grip, if it was completely icy, as it is currently outside right now, then if this person started to run on a sheet of ice, they would just slip around and not actually move anywhere uh, of consequence. So the shoes need to grip the ground in order for this person to run, and that is friction. Let's do another example. Here is a car moving along at a nice steady speed. It's moving to the left, and these little gray lines represent wind, represent uh, air drag. So I'll put that in as our first force. Air drag is going to oppose the motion of the car. And I claim that there are three other forces acting on the car. See if you can figure them out. Okay. Gravity. Pulling the car down, the car is on a surface, so there is a normal force pushing the car up. And finally, there must be something pushing the car forwards. If there wasn't a something pushing the car in this direction, then the air drag would simply slow the car down and it would come to a stop. But there is a, there must be something keeping it moving, and that something is friction. Because the tires can grip the road, it's the tires uh, are pushing off of the ground and the ground is pushing the car forwards. So this is a force of friction on the car due to the ground. Now you may object and say, wait a second, isn't the engine of the car pushing it forward? And if we talk loosely, the answer could be yes. There is certainly an engine in there. Without the engine, the car wouldn't really go anywhere. But the engine is not in contact with the ground. The engine just generates the, the power necessary for, to make the car move. But what's making the car move is the wheels gripping the road. That's the key. Right. So the big lesson from the past two of these is that if your object has some source of internal power to it, like a person or a car, it can actually use friction to speed things up. So this is the big deal. Friction can slow things down, as we know from everyday life, but it can also speed them up, and that's a huge revelation. All right, last example, the rocket ship. This rocket is is uh, ascending, it is taking off, and you can see it's throwing a lot of stuff out the back. So there's, I'll give you one force, which is the thrust force. The way rockets work is they chuck stuff out the rear end at really fast speeds. That's what all this fire and plume is for. Ga hot gas is being chucked out the back of the rocket. That's pushing it upwards, called a thrust force. And there are two other forces. Here. My big hint, air friction is not negligible. That means air, air drag is a thing. And since, the air, since this rocket is going upwards, air drag is going to oppose that motion and point downwards. So you've got air drag pushing the rocket down. And you've got gravity also pushing the rocket down. That's it.
Now, notice what's absent. Unlike every other diagram, this is missing a normal force. Why is there no normal force on the rocket? Well, it's because the rocket is not actually touching any surface. It's in the air, so no normal force at all. Okay, so now go and do the homework. It's a sheet of free body diagrams. Read the directions and complete those, and I will put some answers online so you can, you can check your work. All right, have a wonderful snow day, and uh, yeah, enjoy yourself.